All right, link drop. There's the link for the YouTube in the in the chat. <clears throat> All right, we are we are thin on numbers. They'll usually come rolling in here in uh, any minute now, but let's just do the thing. We gotta we gotta. Now that I'm really truly uh, kind of on the men back from the stupid back surgery crapola. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm starting to get a little more kind of timely. So heads up to everybody that I'm going to try to be starting on time a little bit better than I think I was. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. This is where we were. Um, is there any housekeeping, anything that, that kind of general, general, uh, interest, anything that we need to to hit on before we launch in. Bueller, anybody? It's okay if there's not. Okay, you ready for this? We are learning how to program in binary. Programming a computer with ones and zeros. You can literally, my old joke was that I'm, you know, back in my, back in my day, Back in my day, uh, we only had ones and zeros, and we didn't even always have ones, you know? I mean, it was brutal. But uh, no, there was a day, you know, way back, where literally there wasn't the 50s, 40s and 50s. Uh, man, when did assembly show up? Kind of early, but but I'm just saying, there was a phase when there was, in fact, nothing but ones and zeros. And the very first... Uh, the truly first personal computer, which was the Altair, the Altair, I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that, Altair, I'll say. Um, if somebody wants to drop a link in about the Altair, it had a 8-bit machine. I think it was based on the Intel 8088, spelled 8088, based on that 8-bit processor. And uh, literally, it had a panel of like four buttons in the front and then a little like toggle switch. So you'd like flip these literally up or down for a for an 8-bit instruction had 8-bit in assembly and you know uh machine instructions you would literally flip them is everybody awake somebody find me a link to the altair a-l-t-a-i-r come on peoples um and then you would just literally flip these up and down just like that slide shows with the instruction and then you'd go click and that would like load that into memory and then you would flip the next one and you'd go tunk tunk and it would put that one in the memory and it would just keep, you know, every time you would do that, it would load it to the next spot in memory. And then you could run your program and all the output was basically just these blinking lights. That's the only output you had was blinking lights. Um, so yeah, yeah, serious. Where is everybody? Come on, come on, man. I said, give me, I'm doing it myself. You, you're all asleep. You're all asleep. Oh, it was the 8800. It wasn't even the 8088. It was the 8800. Okay, here we go. Uh, you bunch of snoozers. Okay, I guess. Gay, big gay beat me to it. No, Matthew, sorry. I have, I have to like, we all, we now we're like, we're flooded with Wikipedia articles on the altar. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks for waking up there, uh, uh, Matthew and Gabe and Gomez. And apparently me too. And Texas is now awake. And, <laughs> oh, man, the coffee's still kicking. Yeah, man. Uh, takes a while sometimes, you know. Oh, yeah, okay, come on. Join me here. Join me here. Everybody, brains turn on. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, awesome, Eddie. Uh, and, and it sounds like your coffee's already kicking in there, Eddie. Um, Alchi, her coffee needs coffee today. Uh, his, her, Alchi's coffee needs coffee today. There are days like this. Okay. I'm going to just, I was in the bathroom, so that's not fair. <laughs> can't bring my desktop with me in there. It's too heavy and I can't pee quickly with it. Lappies. Okay. Enough of this. T TMI, Eddie. TMI. Okay. We're going. We're going. You were blaming me and I'm going to tell you the truth. I have no shame. That's yes, I see that. It's all good. It's all good. It's okay. 
we're just glad that everybody's kind of waking up and everybody's coffee's getting coffee and everybody's, you know, everybody's Dr. Pepper is out getting coffee. I don't know. It's a, it's a slow day, but Hey, check it out. Today's the 25th of March. You know, what's significant about that? It's almost April. Think about that. You know what happens in April? Gateway to May, baby. Gateway to May. April we April is the last class. Classes end in April. Okay, this is good. We all need a break. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We did this one. Slide 38. That's where we ended. I remember. No, there's no April Fools, Texas. Uh okay. Again, remember the magic. Remember the magic. This is 16. These are just 16 bits. And all and everything that you see up here in this in this picture happens because of these 16 bits. Why? Just the circuitry. It's built to do that. So when when it looks at that 0001, that drives the control unit, which drives the state machine. All the circuitry is set up to do all that stuff, set up the registers, you know, and that crank is turning and the marbles are moving. Best visual, by the way, I've ever done. Uh, I think, um, in 4450, I use Russian dolls to teach recursion. That's pretty good. But I think that the marble puzzle to teach clock cycles is pretty dang good. You got to admit that. I have to admit that. Okay, here we go. Let's do this one. Are you ready? Can you tell I'm excited? And all I've had for stimulant this morning is this. Really? Well, I had a granola bar. What happens, everybody? What happens? This is a class participation time. It's This is so much easier when we're all together, so I'm so sorry. But it's just a little harder when we're remote like this. But so please, you know, get dust off your your whatever you need to dust off. Dust something off and and be on board here. We're Those are just the registers. They're just... That's just random values that just happen to be in the registers. Over here is the cheat sheet, just to make everything easier for everybody. So you have to keep looking it up. And here's the instruction. The question is, what's going to happen? Step number one. There's always step number one, and the step number one is always the same. When you're looking at this thing, it's the same thing that the computer does when it's in that de Fetching it just takes it out of memory, puts it in the instruction register. That's fetch. The next one is decode. We're in the decode phase right now. Okay. And just imagine that it's sitting here in the instruction register. Very first thing you always do is just look at the opcode. Nothing makes any sense. The opcode determines the social contract for what the other 12 bits actually mean, how they're going to be interpreted by the computer. So 0101, and we just go looking for it. Where is it? Right there, right there, it's an AND instruction. So we know that that's an AND, okay? What's it gonna do? Well, up here it actually has a little cheat sheet for you. There's DR, that's destination register. SR1 is the, source, is the first source register. Then it's all about bit five. If bit five is a zero, then there's a second source register. If it's one, then there's an immediate value, okay? Is it going to and the value in in the first red in SR one and then with SR two and then store it in the DR? It yes, if so if it bit, would be if well if bit five is zero, that's when it has two. But it's one. But it's one. So the next and thing then, that comes up is an immediate value, which is zero. All zeros. So what is SR one? Which register is it? Zero one zero. Right, which is R one. No. R zero R wait. Ah wait, hold on, that's the, okay, two. R two. That's right. So it's gonna take the value in register two. It's gonna and it, because that's the instruction. It's gonna and it with zeros. What's that gonna give you? All zeros. Hey, right? It's going to blow everything up, right? That's what it does. Anding anything with zero just blows it up. And that's all zeros, okay? 
The other thing is that's only five bits worth of zeros. It's going to sign extend it with zeros. Did I do that in the right direction? I don't even know. Sign extend it with zeros. It's gonna it's it's gonna be sixteen zeros when the when the and happens. Got to remember that part. Okay, and then when it gets done, the value is gonna be zero. And where's it gonna put it? R two. Back to R two. So effectively, if you were just to summarize. You know, in really short statement, what would you know? How would you describe it? You're like this instruction. You know, like in two words or three, like really compressed. What's it doing in effect? Zeroing, zeroing out all of the bits. In what? In in what? Yeah, in, in what? the register. Which register? In register two. Yeah. Two. Be, be precise. Be precise. Right. Oh. So it's clearing R two. Or it's putting all zero. It's just it's it's setting R two to be zero, or it's clearing R two, or it's zeroing out R two. That's what it's doing. That is the effect. Okay. Now let's walk through it, because if my memory serves me, there's no animation. Wait, isn't there animation? Oh no, no, no. That there isn't. That's just a walkthrough. Okay. What about what about this one? I sorry, I missed my. I'm so slow. My Dr. Pepper is still out for coffee. It's not back yet. Um, come on, stop. Chuck, what am I doing here? I've lost my mind. Okay, right here. What I missed was that's the first one. Here's the next one. Let's do this instruction instead. What is it? Zero, 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 0001. What is it? Well, let's go look for it. Like, oh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. and if I was smart and started at the top, I'd go, it's an add instruction. Okay. What works the same way as the and in terms of where we get our operands only this time okay now actually the same thing this time the fifth you know bit five is one so we go to add bit five is one so we know it's this guy right here so we take a source register which is r6 r6 right four plus two and no ones so that's r6 and it's going to take the value in r6 and it's going to add to it this immediate value, which is going to be sign extended, so all zeros. So that's just one. It's just going to add one. And then where is it going to put it? Back into R6. That's what the instruction, that, that's all the little steps. But if you summarized it, right, think of it as a higher level, what would be another way of saying that? In like two words. Go as you're flashing. It looks like you're eager to answer. Just just mussing around with my mic, but I did have a question actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, go. What's going to determine that it gets extended? Like that that's going to be all zeros. Like, will it always just be all zeros or? No, did we? we no, let me. And I'm trying to just remember. Did we do all the sign extend stuff? I just don't yeah. remember. It might have been when I was out. You know, for surgery. I'm not during module three. Which was when uh, we were watching old old lectures. Okay, yeah, that's probably doesn't. I don't remember right because it was because that was why I was out. I don't remember anything actually. It turns out, yeah, yeah. So the idea here is with sign extending, the whole idea. It's a very simple. If it's a positive number, then that last bit is zero, right? Then you just put all zeros out there. If it's a negative number, then that last bit is one, and you just put all ones. Right. And there's an intuition there again with sign extending a, the positive number. That's actually just makes sense. Right. That we, we get that like, Oh, 10, but give me 20 digits worth. Okay. Zero, 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 right. 10. If we're, if we're in base 10, but with, uh, with this, with, with, you know, binary and with two's complement notation, if it's a positive number, the intuition's really natural. When it's a negative number, you got to think one more step, which is, if that last bit is one, if you if you padded it with zeros, you just turned it into a positive number. That doesn't even make sense, you know? But if you padded it with all ones, and then you say, okay, what's the positive value of that negative number? What's the first thing you do? Flip all the bits, and all those ones turn into zeros. And there's your nice, happy, positive number. You add one, right, as we do whenever we convert into complement notation whenever we convert a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive 
Um, you know what I mean? Um, does that make sense? So it's very, very simple. Sign extension. Literally, you take the sign and just duplicate it. So if it's zero, zeros. If it's one, ones. That's it. And you all and and you always do that. Okay. Otherwise, you don't. You know, when you did an and, you wouldn't do anything to the other. You know. Uh, uh what is that? Eleven bits. Okay. So yeah. So okay. So what is this? What is this doing? We take the value in R six. We pull it out. We take the immediate value of one. We add that to the value that we got from R6. We take that value, we put it back into R6. What did we just do at a high level? In two words. Add or one. Okay. Uh, more precise. Still two words, but more precise. Incremented. Incremented what? By one. Incremented what? The value in R6. I yeah. don't. Yeah. Even tighter. You just incremented R6. A for loop. I'm sure there's some for loop that we're incrementing You're, for. Am I imagining things or is this no, like no. literally? <laughs> no, that's literally how a for loop would work. You would increment some value that you're counting on. You know what I mean? You set up something like, oh, for, for some value, you know, zero through nine, right? Well, you take the register, you put zero in it. And every time through, you would do this instruction. Increment that, increment it, increment it. Then every time you check it. Because the other thing, remember we talked about the control codes that get set every time you write a value. And by the way, I just want to say this. I know I'm, I keep, I'm probably just a little annoying, tiny, tiny bit annoying. Um, when I keep saying, be more precise, be more precise. It's really, really important because at, at your stage of the game, being in computer science, being a software engineer, um, being a, a you know a, a developer and a, you know a developer of software, precision is really really critical. And if you have a vague idea, the 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 you know what I mean, the idea is floating, but you've got to put words to it to make it more precise. So if you so when you say it adds one, there's you know it's still too vague. Like well, adds oh. one to what? You know what I mean? What what would be the answer that you were looking for? So I can I can understand more of how specific I need. To oh, be. on this one, I'm just looking. No, like when I said increment R six is an example of a really it, there's all the information I need to know is there. I could say add one to R six. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, but the the challenge is, and and this isn't, and the reason I'm pressing this right now, it made me seem like I'm just being like overly semantic, you know, or overly pedantic or some other, or overly antic, I don't know. But the reason I'm doing that is, is, is a couple fold. Number one, a lot of you, when you get to the little short answer stuff, are going to struggle by saying things that are vague and not precise, but you're, and that reflects that it's probable that your thinking is a little more vague and imprecise. The more precise you can force yourself to think about it and express it, the cleaner the thinking is because if you said it adds one well i could look at that instruction and go add one but i didn't really tell you all the things that are in there i could see that so, there's an add and a one but saying that that we're incrementing our six is just as precise as we can be and at a sort of a nutshell like we've really put it in a nutshell and embodied the idea the concept so yeah, go ahead. We, sorry. Yeah, no. Did somebody good. else? Oh, okay. Um. So when we're responding to you, as in, what are we doing? We want to include the register or registers that are being used, and then what's being where it's being stored, and everything. Yeah. So like, instead of like just what we're doing in that one um bit, like a uh, uh operation, it's more you want to know what registers we're using and what about like what's happening and then where it's being stored. Yeah, and, and more importantly, but even more importantly than that, that's sort of a first step. More, I think next step is embody the higher level concept. So increment, you know, in, in incrementing something is sort of a, an idiomatic pattern. It's a low level pattern in software. 
the notion that you increment something, which is a fancy way of saying adding one to something. But when you say increment, it has, there's, there's sort of like all these ideas that, that kind of come along with it, but adding one to, it, it is true that anything that you add one to is, has been incremented by one. That is true. But what the reason, the other second reason, the first reason I said was exercising, being more precise at, at, at expressing yourselves. The second one though, is that there's also an exercise of looking at things really low level and then, you know, piecing that together in your head until it grabs onto a higher level concept. Like if I say, for example, let's just say, for example, I'm not, I don't have the code here, but let's just say that I took R6 and five was zero instead of one. And the, the SR2, the second source register was also R6. So the instruction is an add. It takes the value in R6. It adds it to the value in R6 and puts the result into R6. What did it do? You know, at, at a higher, and if you say it takes the value it from, it doubled R6. You see what I mean? If you say it takes the value in R6 and that takes, uh, 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 well, that's what I just did. But if I say, what does it do? What did it do? I doubled R6. Okay, cool. You see what I mean? And and it's really an exercise in trying to manage abstraction. Remember day one abstraction, right? That whole high level to low level, because it's really easy with assembly and machine language to get a little lost in the weeds. Part of the Part of the fluency that you're trying to acquire is a fluency in which um, you learn to see the small pieces, but then see a larger pattern, you know? Okay, so we're trying to understand what's happening on a lower level when we're working on a higher level. Like, I mean, right now we're on the low level. Yeah, Yeah, you're bridging it. You're bridging it. Make a connection between the two levels of abstraction. Yeah, that's right. And and the best analogy that I can think of in the real world is probably like chess. You know, if I've got, um, I know not everybody plays chess, but there's there's sort of a, a thing where you go, like imagine that you've got your king, you know, pinned against the thing and there's a queen over there that's just on the, you know, on the, on the column there, on the row or on the file. Um, and when you're brute forcing it, you go, okay, the king can move here. The king can move there. You're like, oh, that's in the queen's way. Oh, that one's also in the queen's way. Oh, that's in the queen's way. And, and you see what I mean? There's no, there's no pattern. There's no higher level pattern. You're just brute forcing it, which has always been kind of, you know, how I've tended to play chess, which is why it's not, hasn't been fun. Right. And you, you know what I mean? You just like check every piece for everything it can do. But once you've, got a little bit of experience, you just go, oh, the queen's just got a barrier. Queen is there, barricade, king cannot cross there. All the king's options are elsewhere. You don't even go, he can't go there, he can't go there, he can't go there. You know what I mean? In your mind, you see, you know what I mean? That, uh, what do they call that, a rank? Um, You know, you see that thing occupied by the queen and it just goes away, the pattern's right there, right? Yeah, it's it's more automatic than... uh you need to take those little bitty steps. That's right. Higher game. level of abstraction. Similar thing if, if anybody follows sports. And for whatever you do, your gaming things or whatever your contemporary cool thing is, there's probably very similar things. But if, if you watch a football game and you're like, what happened on that one play? And you're like, well, it was kind of a, it was a coverage sack. If I say it was a coverage sack, then I, you, you really know a great deal about the play in two words because that's kind of a pattern. That, but you could also say, well, the one guy ran there, and then that guy ran there, and that guy covered that, and that. Well, I was happy, and these guy ran there. Da, 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 da. But that is too, you know, too much down in the weeds. You got to pull it back up and say, that's a coverage sack, that's a safety blitz, or you know, NCAA tournament going on, right? That's a fast break, you know, that's a slam dunk, that's a that's an alley oop. You know, we have these terms. And that's why something like increment R6 is kind of the deep nerd equivalent of alley-oop. You just say it was an amazing alley-oop and you know that one player lobs it up somehow, right? And that the other players coming in usually from the other side, right? Catches it in the air, 
jams. You know what that pattern is if you follow basketball. You know? It's a beautiful increment. <laughs> increment by two. That's right. It was wonderful. What a great play. So, Incrementing. <laughs> no, they don't say incrementing. But you see what I mean, though? Yeah, no, I That's know. what we're trying to do here. That's the exercise. So there's a lot of questions that you'll get in the modules coming up that'll be like, here's some code. What does it do? Like that. And it might be something like it doubles the value or it finds a prime number or it multiplies the first value by the second value. Or you see what I mean? It's going to, um, yeah, thanks. Sorry, Matthew. <laughs> Sorry, all the basketball talk. Um, no, but you know what I mean? It, it's what I'm asking you to do. And I'll, I'll usually say something like 20 words or less, because what used to happen is I'd get people just going, first it takes a value, puts it over here. Then it takes that, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I don't need a step-by-step, -step, you know, articulation of what every instruction does. It's the skill of building that those small steps into a higher level of abstraction. Okay, Matthew, Noah, um, what are your things? I mean, we, I, just chat them. What is what is your thing where there are words that mean higher level of abstraction, but I wouldn't get it because it's whatever, League of Legends or something or whatever you're playing, Fortnite. Um, I wouldn't get it, but if you tried to explain it to me, you would eventually break the whole thing down. You know what I mean? Is there anything outside of chess? Curious. You know what I mean? Where you'd have to say, okay, it's a kind of a situation in which, you know, one guy here. I think it's <laughs> strategy, right? But it's a, you're able to do a more broad, like, term. Like, as far as I can see the chess thing, and maybe this is easier to apply to everything, but, like, um, you're able to see the the smaller moves with the pieces without having to individually notice it. It's automatic right. and because they're part strategy of strategy. Like, because they're part of a larger uh, pattern, slightly larger right. pattern, right? And that pattern often has a name a lot of times. And then we call those, we actually call those idiomatic patterns. They're little patterns and they have names and they're very small things, you know, like a discovered check. You know, where you're like, move a piece out of the way. And there was a check just waiting there, you know, in chess again or whatever, you know. I've been trying to get my chess game, you know, improved. Um, my oldest son is is actually, I think he might be the best chess teacher in the state of Utah. He's a very, very good chess teacher. If anybody's interested, I will set you up. Um, and he was, uh, when he was 18, he was the Utah State Amateur Chess Champion. Uh, and uh, that was decade, you know, more than a decade ago. But um, anyway, he's a great teacher. So he's been trying to like, get me out of my brute force mode. What is he trying to do? He's trying to get me to do exactly what I'm trying to get you to do in machine language. Okay. All right. And just, tr and I want you to just trust me that this is a really, really valuable skill to have just going into computer science. It's, it's a very important skill. If there's a reason that I talked about abstraction at the very beginning. Okay. All right. So, okay. I just have one more thing to say before we move on. Sorry. Yeah. Go um, no, you're good. Okay, Eddie. So in the terms of what we just did, um, the itty bitty moves are the taking the value from the register, doubling it and putting it back in. And the overall thing is saying, well, I mean like um, adding it to itself and then putting that value back into the register. Those are the itty bitty moves that you That's see. That's right. Those are the little, the brute, the brute force. Term. Right. And then the overall term is you're doubling the value that's in right. R6. That's kind okay, of the so pattern. Okay. So that's like how, how we're applying the itty bitty chess moves to the, um, this is a certain type of move. That's right. I, I mean, exactly. possible. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. Okay. So we're, all right. We've brought it back around. We're good now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really kind of cool when you think about it in your, just think about your own, Oh, Queen's Gambit. Oh my gosh. The Queen's Queen's Gambit was amazing on Netflix. I, I thought it was remarkable and tremendous. I recommend it. Um, but no, anyway, it's just that idea. I'm gonna move off here, but but just understand that that it's not enough to say I know what all these little things are. You have to now pull yourself back and realize that there's a bunch of patterns that when you see these things, you start to think at a higher level of pattern, like 
I'm doubling, I'm clearing, you know, and then, you know, like the, remember we sometimes talked about how does the computer know that that's, uh, you know, what that is? Well, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't care, right? It just does exactly the instruction you gave it to do. But the programmer has to know how that instruction fits in with everything. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to like spend so much time on this, but I really wanted to understand what yeah. you're asking. Well, no, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we Honest, can totally move on now. For no, me I, anyway. I agree. I think it's a good time to move on. But I just want to say, Eddie, honestly, I this is really important. And this is a point I really try to make every time, every semester. I really want to try to make this point. So I think this has really brought it home quite a bit. And also Queen's Gambit. Go check it out. Um, okay. So well written, so well written, and so well acted. Um, okay, so let's let's look at this again. You see, all I'm trying to do here is just the notion of like how these instructions work. That starts to fall out, and you've got not just that cheat sheet, but the whole appendix with a whole page for every one of those instructions. You got all those things. So let's just assume we got two values. We'll call them A and B, and we shove them into R zero and R one. How they got there, we don't care, but they're there. And I wanna go A minus B. I think, hey Gomez, I think we got a hot mic on the keyboard. Um, just, just check that. And so the question is, how do you do A minus B? And then you're gonna put the result into R2. How do you do it? What do you do? I don't know what happens next. Yeah, add negative B. Right. A minus B is A plus negative B, which means you got to negate B, right? First step, you got to negate B. Whatever B is, if it's negative, you got to make it positive. If it's positive, you got to make it negative. So you can then just add them. How do, and then how do we negate B? You already know this. Use the non. You, you flip all the no. bits. Well, flip all the bits and add one. And add one. Oh. It's amazing. My bad. I it's a, that. It is amazing to me still down the stretch when we get to like module whatever that there'll still be programs I get that where it's like. How do you do that with operations? Like with these op codes and stuff? We're How gonna do, do you it. Make it? That's exactly, okay, cool. yeah, that's exactly where we're going to go. But I want to start conceptually. Now, also when I say negate B, right? Well, that's me being, that's the name of that little pattern. Negate B, right? Well, B is in R1, so I'm negating R1. How do I negate? I flip all the bits and I add one. Flipping all the bits and then adding one, that's the brute force mechanism. Yeah, that's the mechanics, you're right? That's just, the, that's just the mechanism. What have I done? I've negated B. I negated R1, meaning... I took whatever it was and changed the sign. Okay. Here we go. So step number one. Um, this is just, by the way, this is just little pseudo code. There's, this is nothing official. Okay. There's nothing official. It's just comment out here to kind of remind you, which says, I take B, I nod it, and I put that value into R1. So how do I flip all the bits? Well, I use the not instruction. There's the source register, which is register one, which has B in it. We already said that. That's just reserved. Those ones are just reserved because not is super simple. I, I just basically take register one, flip all the bits and put it back in register one. So I just knotted register one. Cool. I have a quick question yeah. on the offer. Yeah, Matthew. Why are why is five to zero? Why are they all ones instead of zeros? Over down the stretch, those last six bits. Yeah, wouldn't that be like a waste of electricity comparatively? <laughs> Not no. All things considered, it, I don't think it's even hardly. No, I can't. I can't even imagine that that would be significant from an electricity perspective. Um, it would have to be total noise. And from a logic perspective, there's probably some reason why. In the control unit, it just works better if those are ones. There, there's no Fair other enough. real rhyme or reason to that. And if not, it's a social contract. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. In the LC3, social contract says 
when the first four bits are 1001, meaning it's a not instruction, then the last six bits are all ones. That's it. Yeah. The, I, I suspect there's a reason down in the hardware that makes it just a little easier for some reason. At our level, we don't care. Okay, so we flip all the bits in R1. Now what do we got to do? You already know it's coming. I got to do an add instruction from R1. Okay. And I'm adding one. Okay. So bit five is one, which means it's got an immediate value. The immediate value is one. So what that now has done is created the value of negative B. It's basically taken B and negated it. Now in this case, uh, it's putting it in R2. You could put it anywhere, okay? You could put it anywhere. Uh, but we put it into R2. That's all right. So R2 now holds negative B. What I now got to do is I got to take R0 and R2 and add those together. And the result has to go into R2 because that, that was our rule. That was our spec. There's our add. It, bit five is zero, so I'm gonna use a, a two source registers, R0 and R2, and I'm gonna put the results into R2. That's our program. That is our program. Believe it or not, we just wrote a six byte program. For real, that's a six byte program to do this really, really simple thing, which is to perform A minus B, so long as A is in R0 and B is in R1, and put the result in R2, that's it. You see how we start with that abstraction again? Like, yeah, do, do A minus B, and then it breaks out into this. So it kind of, and it goes both directions. Here's some assembly code, or some machine code, we're not really to assembly that yet. Here's some machine code, what does it do? Okay, here's a problem. How do you do it? They're, they're both exercises in managing across the abstraction. All right. Rock and roll. Okay, those were all the operator instructions. We did them all. We did them all. We did add, we did and, and we did not. And in the LC3, that's all we got for operator instructions. It's crazy simple. That rhymed. Just saying. What did I do? What did I do? We got add and 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 not and in the LC3, that's all we've got. Boom. I'm a poet. Where's my mic? I got a mic drop something. I got nothing. He's a poet and he didn't mic. even realize it. Glue stick. Okay. Yeah, that's all I got. It's the yes, closest it's thing. Mic. It's the closest thing. To <laughs> it's, a teeny mic, but it's the best. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, thanks for thanks for pointing out. I can't stop the rhyme. You know what I mean? I cannot stop the rhyme. I, I will point it out every time. Fabulous. Okay, next up, next up is data movement. Okay, because we now know, we now know, you know, we all know um, how to do the operator instructions. And if this were a bigger, more complex processor, there'd be a bunch more. There'd be a subtract instruction a multiply instruction, a division instruction. There'd be floating point operations. There'd be a bunch of crap. For us, pretty simple. Okay, data movement is the part where we data's gotta move around, right? We gotta get the data out of memory into the registers, out of the registers into memory, right? Stuff, we gotta move stuff around. Now, sometimes, by the way, we, we sometimes move stuff around within the registers by actually doing like tricky math. Like if I wanna move the value from R1 into R2, I can basically just take R1 as a source register, add zero to it, and put the result in R2. Do you see what I just did? I copied R1 and put the copy in R2. You know what I mean? I used, I used an add to do it, but I'll, I really moved between registers. And by the way, one just little tiny piece of vernacular, we often talk about move a value from A to B, you know, from here to there, move a value. You understand that with computers, this probably goes without saying maybe, but if I've got a value over here and I move it, guess, you know, and I take these eight bits, you know, and I put them over there, what's back there? 
hint. The same eight bits. You can't, you don't take the bits away so that there's nothing left in the hardware. You know, you know what I mean? There's always something in all the live circuitry in the hardware. There's always something. Ones or zeros everywhere. It's all about the circuitry to determine whether we care or not. So if I take, if I, so when I say move a value from a register to memory or move a value from memory to a register, I'm not saying somehow that you have to go get the value and like go over into memory and like scrub it all clean so that it doesn't have any more bits in it. Like a, it's not like a bucket of dirt. You know what I mean? It's not like a wheelbarrow of dirt. If you move the dirt from over here to over there, then there's dirt that was here is no longer there. But when you're digital, right? And I move it, quote unquote. And and to reinforce this idea in, in, in x86 assembly, um, there's actually an instruction called move. It is literally, it's not called copy. It's called move. And after it takes a thing and takes it out of here and puts it there, guess what's back there? It's still there. It literally is a copy, but the term is move. Okay, just very, very infrequently on a fraction of a percent of the time, there is confusion about that. Okay, data movement, ready? This is the part where, so we can move stuff between registers using add instructions. So, so in that case, they're like add instructions masquerading as a data movement instruction. Because we did take something in one register and put it in another register without affecting the first register. But when we talk about data movement instructions, we're talking primarily about load and store. Okay, and this is also really important to get kind of in your head. You, you store into memory and you load into a register. So when you're loading, you're going out to memory, grabbing something and putting it into a register. That's load. And there's different varieties. Remember the different, you know, uh, what do we call them? The different uh, memory modes or the different, um, what do we call it? Man, why am I blanking on that? I don't know. Um, but when we're storing, we're going, we're moving from a register out to memory. Best way I can think about this is storage unit. That has the word store right in it, storage unit, okay? Um, and I like that because you, let's say you have a storage, some of you have had storage units or your parents have had storage units, right? You've got this storage unit and you control it. And I have something that's local to me here in my house or right in my room or whatever. And I go take it and what do I do? I put it in storage. I store it in storage. And when I want to go get it out of storage, maybe I take my car or my truck and I load my car. I load the truck. You go to the storage unit and you load your truck. I don't know. And you bring that back. That's the best way. Again, it's all open book, but just to try to have a little bit of a, of a mnemonic way of kind of remember that. Okay. So I'm loading into registers from memory. And I'm storing from uh, the register into memory. Another way of thinking about it is you're, you're from the control unit's perspective. Control unit is reigning supreme, right? Control unit manages and controls everything, right? So you're in the control unit's perspective. What's close to me? The registers. What's far away? The memory. Are there, is there a processor down there by the memory? Is there circuitry over there in the memory? Yeah. That's over there. I'm not worried about it. I'm the control unit and I'm going to load my registers and I'm going to store them out. Again, I'm just trying to give you some ways to, to, you know, try to remember that a little bit, make that a little more native. Okay. Um, and then this is also really important, whether you're loading or storing in the same way that when you, when you load or store and you move, you know, a, a value, Number one, wherever it came from still has it. Wherever it goes to, whatever had been there is toasted. Okay? Because anything I'm writing to in the computer is, is overwritten. 
and anything I read from remains, unless I go back and overwrite something to it, like all zeros or whatever. Okay. Okay, there are seven, seven data movement instructions. Oh, baby. Oh. Where's my DP? I really need something really, really badly. Oh. Okay. Data movement instructions. We got a half hour, then I can get some kind of stimulant in my body. When we do data movement instructions, there are always two operands. And, and don't worry about like remembering how many operands. I'm just saying there are two. There's always a register. There's always a register because all the data movements are either going from a register to memory or they're coming from out there into a register. So if it's a, if it's a load instruction where it's coming to me, then it's a destination register. If it's a store instruction, right? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, if it's a store instruction, it's coming from a register out to memory. So I need a source register. Like, so if I'm going to do a store and you're the control unit, you're going to say, yeah, which, uh, which register did you want to pull that from? That's the source. If you're going to bring it into the registers, you're going to say, which register do you want me to put it into? destination. But either way, it's always these three bits. And it just depends. It's, it's, you know, it's a destination register when it's a load, it's a source register when it's a store, but same thing. And then this remaining nine bits here, address generation, that's just the part that's like, where do you want me to go? You know, if I say here, here's a package, go put it in storage. And you're like, well, where do you want me to go? Put it in storage, right? Or I need you to go and get this thing for me. Where do you want me to go to get it? That's what the address generation bits is just a kind of a mysterious way of saying, uh, you're going to have to tell me where you, where I'm going to go get this from. Okay. And it turns out that in order to make programming interesting and easy and convenient, um, there's just a number of these different addressing modes. That, that's the term I was drawing blank on. Addressing mode. Okay. So here we go. This I already said, right? This, if it's a load, then you're the, that's the destination. If it's a store, it's the, it's the source register. That's not important. Okay. That really isn't important. Other than just to know that if I'm loading, I'm loading into memory, into a register, so I do need to know what register and it'll be pretty obvious. You know what I mean? You don't have to memorize that. It'll, it'll jump out pretty quickly. Okay. Seriously. Hold on a second. Hold on. I may have something. I have um, something that I think will wake me up and you're like powerful meds, Dr. K. No, but it'll help me. All right, we got four ways to interpret these nine bits. I already told these to you. And I'm going to explain them to you now. PC relative, indirect, base plus offset, immediate. Very mysterious. Let's contemplate the hand for a second while we think about these four. Okay, you ready? Here we go. PC relative. And by the way, I know it's right now, it's a little bit of, I get it. Um, just understand that, just understand that this is where the fluency shows up, right? This is the fluency. If you're learning a language, there's a point where you see what the language is kind of doing or whatever. The alphabet you're trying to learn, you're learning the Cyrillic alphabet or you're trying to learn Korean or something. You know. And right out of the chute, you're just like, Dah! Okay, remember Dr. K's rules of learning, Dr. K's theory of learning? Did I share this with you? I should have by now. 
Anybody remember Dr. K's theory of learning? It's pretty simple. I remember part of it. Step one. one enjoy not knowing things was part enjoy of it. Enjoy doing it badly. Yes, there we go. Okay, right. For example, enjoy doing it badly. Do you know how long it took me? I don't even do this well. Do you know how long it took me to figure that out? Five years. <laughs> a, a day and a half. A couple hours. Two very extreme. A couple different... hours. But what I did was I just said I was here at my desk. I had a movie going, Netflix or something. And I'm just sitting here literally like this, doing, doing that, dropping the drumstick over and over and over again. Just going like that. And it would go and fly and injure something. And it would go break a window. You know, I mean, I just sit there and sit there, um, you know, until this became weirdly calloused right here. All I'm saying is, and I still suck at it really, uh, but it's okay. I just enjoyed doing it badly. I'm just like, I'm going to watch a movie here and just, you know, do the thing. Cause I'm just, I'm a drummer, not a great one. And I, and to be a great one, you have to spin the sticks. It's a rule. It's an unwritten rule of drummers. Practice makes better. Can. You're never going to be perfect. Can. But so, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so all I'm saying is that you got to enjoy doing it badly. Stay in it. Don't worry if you're, if you suck at it. Everybody sucks pretty much at everything the first time they ever touch it. That's just like law of nature. Okay. But your second part, trust your brain. Trust your brain. Your brain wants to solve the puzzle. Your brain wants to twirl the sticks. Your brain wants to learn that language. Your brain, you just have to just keep the stimulus coming to the brain so that the brain, while you're sleeping and doing everything else, is literally learning and teaching and grooving everything in. But if it doesn't have any, if it doesn't have any stimulus, it has nothing to work with. So if you're like, I'm going to hit it on Saturday and I'm not going to touch it until next Saturday, not good. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Matthew, I just saw you. <coughs> I just saw your chat, Matthew. I'm a poet and I didn't even realize it. Um, I'm going to use that. Um, no, anyway, but I'm um, seriously, this is the part where it's starting to get a little funky. Spend time every day, budget the time, just like Duolingo, budget an hour every day for this class. Just do it. And that will do a tremendous amount. And your brain will try to latch on and figure crap out. And it'll start to just get smoother and smoother, more native, more natural, really, truly. Okay. Um, okay. So for PC relative, we're going to show you two instructions, load and store. LD and ST, we just usually call these load and store, you know. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Is that Shia? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's Shia. Yeah, man. Thank you. That man is batshit crazy. But he's a brilliant actor. Okay. Um, load and store. Let's get moving, Chuck. Come on, man. Okay. Here's how it works. There's your opcodes. There's load and there's store. Why? Social contract. We just decided. This PC offset nine. Okay, here's what that here's what that means. It's nine bits. That's the nine. PC offset means that you take the program counter. Okay, you take the program counter, which by the way has already been incremented. That's really important. The program counter has already been incremented. Remember when we went out to do on every on every turn of the crank, that program counter gets incremented first thing. It takes the incremented program counter, takes whatever the value is in those nine bits, and it just adds that to the program counter. It increments the program counter or decrements it if it's a negative number because that's a two's complement number. And then the program counter has now, you know, sorry, sorry, sorry. We, we're not, effect, I, I got distracted for a second. We're not actually changing the program counter. We're taking the program counter, adding this value, and we're saying that, my friend, is where you're going to put it or where you're going to go get it. 
Okay. It's a little bit like this. You're standing on a sidewalk and some human walks up to you. Could be a non-human as long as they have the power of speech. Could be a parrot, but there's less of that kind of cognition. So let's just go with human. Um, the human walks up to you and goes, hey, here's $5. I need you to bury it under a rock. And you're like, uh, where's the rock? Now, ignore the motivational system here, like why I would do that or why I would, you know what I mean? Ignore, for the sake of argument, we're in a world in which that somehow makes sense. And you're like, well, where's the rock? And he's like, it's uh, 12 steps behind you, right? And what do you do? You just go backwards 12 steps, look down, there's the rock. You put the five bucks under the rock. Or he goes, it's, uh, and for whatever reason, this guy always seems to sound like a construction worker from the Bronx. I'm not sure why that's the guy who's got five bucks for you. But in any case, you know, or he might say, hey, it's 40 paces straight ahead, you know, and you're just like, okay. And you just go, huh? you're the program counter, okay? Or, or you, you know, your location is like the program counter. You're like, well, let me go look over there. I'm not changing the program counter. The program is still going to execute the next instruction next. Okay. But where do I go? It's what gonna happens be... when there isn't a rock? Like the, the computer gets there and then there's nothing there uh, for it to put like, into it. Like, for example, what you're saying is imagine that the program counter was like way the crap out at the end of memory or something. And then you're like, plus uh 27 and there is nothing uh the computer would probably have some kind of error it would have to have some kind of like just kind of hurl its guts out at you and print a message it would be a fatal error right for the program okay what else you know what else are you gonna do you know you gotta be like no i think he probably wants to do this you know there's no, there's no option because, because again, the computer is super dumb. Computer is going to do exactly what you tell it to do, and if it can't, literally can't do that, it's going to go, you know, just, just blow everything up. That's my impersonation of a computer handling a a, a non-recoverable error using a classic dynamite plunger. Okay, all right. Does this make sense? Now, it's just goofy to think about. It's a little goofy to think about, but wherever the program counter is, back a little ways or forward a little ways, I've just got kind of some, I might have a little memory, just some stuff I'm just, that's where I wanted to put it. Okay, now, good news, bad news. Uh, good news, super easy conceptually. I've already got a program counter. It's near the code that I'm running. Think of it like a local variable, right? You know what I mean? Like if you make a little function or a little method, That works I can't hear you. Oh, never mind. I can hear you now. Okay. Eddie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I was freaking out because I was like, he's gonna say something that's super important right now, and I can't hear him. Okay. Yeah, you cut out for like five seconds. I did. Oh, good. I'm glad oh, I'm not crazy. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Now. And then when I come back from the dark, it's like, and that's why Eddie, it's so important that you not forget what I just said. Um, exactly. That's, yeah, yeah. How, that's my luck though. Yeah. Like, no, but so, so PC offset is really convenient. It's super simple. The incremented program counter and there's, you know, there's stuff nearby, just like we do with local variables when we write little functions or little methods or little programs that have stuff that we hold on to. Okay. Very, very simple. And this is called PC relative because it's just behind or ahead of the program counter, right? Some steps back, some steps forward. Now, what's the problem? Jump out. What's the biggest, you know, uh, yeah, what the heck did happen with my sound? I don't even know. Um, yeah, what would be the biggest limitation? What, what's the problem? Anybody see something just kind of maybe dumb about it? What say you? Oh, my sound couldn't find the right rock. Excellent. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, what's the problem with this? Programmatically. You're writing programs. Let's say this is all you had. What's the problem? Eh? Everybody see a problem? Is there no problem? 
The problem I see is it's not all filled out. Okay, you got to use more precise <laughs> language. Not I all know. filled out. It's a little I'm thin. Like it's a little thin and needs to pack on a little more weight is what Eddie's asserting. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? It needs to develop properly or else it won't grow up to be all nice and strong. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. The instructions are incomplete. Well, these are incomplete just because they're examples. But if we did fill them out, right? And you've got nine, and a hint, you've only got nine bits for the PC offset. You've got two to the 16th memory locations in memory, right? Where you can have stuff. What's the big limitation? There's an offset of nine. You've only got you nine. You can more. only have two to the 16th places. Well, Never that, mind, I go with that answer. Well, two to the, there's two to the 16th memory locations, but the problem is that the program counter is somewhere in that memory. It just, right, it's a value that points to some location where you happen to be running your program. I can only get plus or minus about two to the eighth away from the program counter. I can't reach everywhere with this. Right. If I got nine bits, right. right, I got two to the eighth on the plus side. I got, what is it? Two to the eighth, that total, like minus one. Right, right. On the plus side. And then I've got negative two to the eighth on the, on the minus side. Well, what's two to the eighth? Let's do it. Or I always start with two to the fifth is 32, right? I don't know why, because three plus two is five. I'm not sure. It's my always my starting point. Two to the fifth is 32, 64, 128, 256. You you got you got plus 255 and negative 256. That's all the further. That's that's literally like 255 memory locations out in front, or 256 memory locations behind you, right? I mean, that's like, that's like sitting in the middle of, uh, you know, where are we at? Orem, you know, you're sitting in the middle of Orem and you've got, I don't know how long Orem is, right? You know, 10 miles. I don't know how long Orem is end to end, but you got 10 miles of Orem and they're just like, yeah, you can reference anything 200 steps ahead of you or behind you when you're walking down state street. Uh, you know, not a lot of memory. A, no, not going to work. Like, like, okay. You'll forget where the stone was just by trying to find it. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to walk and you're like, well, this is all the further I can go. But the, the thing I need is, you know, up the parkway or whatever. That's the problem. It's so limited in how far you can reference because you've only got nine bits to do it in. So super convenient, really limited. What could we possibly do? How? How? Will we get out of this mess? Okay. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. no. Absolutely. Could we use those um those bits, and each of those bits is then another location for more memory. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's where yeah. we're going. That's where we're going. Yeah, that's an example of an indirect. That's right. You got to get a little more fancy, or like maybe I could look in a register. Because that's 16 bits. Ooh, a register could hold every memory location. If I can get a value in a register, pull and use that for where I'm going to go. Oh, yeah, right? Or I could use it for a location that has other stuff. That's where we're going. That's exactly it. Okay? It's right on. Now, back to this thing. I, I forgot that I have this very cool detailed slide here. Um. But when I do this load instruction, so let's do an example of the load instruction. Okay. Now it's not animated. I apologize. So I apologize so much. I apologize too much. But there's our instruction right there. It's a load. I do not. I'm going to load into R2, and that's my PC offset nine. Okay. There's the program counter right there. What do I do? It's the incremented program counter. It's already been incremented. Very important. I'm just going to look at this like it's a hex value, right? I'm just interpreting that, writing it as hex. Nothing changed here, right? You got that? Nothing changed. 
to become hex 4019. That is what that value is, okay? Does that make sense? That's just, I'm just writing it that way. Yeah, that makes sense. Then I take this value right up here, the nine bits. I sign extend it. So I take, it's a negative number. So I take that negative and I go, and I pat it all out with ones. Do you want me to do that again? And I pat it out with ones. That gives Sorry, what me, was that? Yeah, um, okay. and I pat it out with ones. Uh, and then that, if I write it as hex, goes FFAF. That's just like, okay, these four, those four. You know what I mean? I just break it down as four bits. Is that even correct? Yeah, I think it is. All right. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding 4019 with FFAF. Or put another, I'm adding that PC with this bit. Well, I'm doing this bitwise addition. And it's a negative number. So it's going to be a number less than what the program counter was. It's going to be back behind the program counter. When I add it, I get this 3FC8 just happens to be this plus that. Now here's the part where we start to reinforce. We got to go out to memory because this is a load instruction. I got to go to my storage unit. I got to go out to the storage unit to get this thing. So what do I do? I take 3FC8. I take that address. I put that in the MAR. That's the memory address register. That lights up that spot in memory. And the thing that's in that spot in memory goes into the MDR, the memory data register or data register, depending on your, I don't know what accent. And that MDR then value goes on the bus, goes joinky joinky and into R2, which is the destination register, R2, and goes right there, boom. Not just, we're just saying that that's what was out there. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. We just got that from memory. Boom, see it? And again, you gotta go back through this. This is not adequate. Listening to all of this, do the homework, take the exam, not a recipe for smoking it, okay? You gotta go back through this a little bit on your own. Got to, got to, okay. But that again is like, here's the high level thing. Here's the here's the 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 brute force crunch it. Here's where we're crunching it out. You know what I mean? Okay, the king can go here, the bishop can go there. This is the, you know, there's an idea reflected. This is all the detail that goes into that. Okay. Are you ready? Next one. And we got we got like seven, eight minutes. Let's do, and I can't remember who said it. I want to give proper credit, but, but the, the, like, what if we go indirect? What if we go indirect? Uh, that is a reflection of the excitement when you can go indirect. So we call this one LDI and STI. That's the, that's the op code. You know, that's the name of the op code. And we'll pronounce it load indirect, store indirect is how we say it. And we make the addresses exactly like you do with load and store, okay? The actual creation of the address is the same, but are you ready? What the control unit does is a not a the same. By the way, can I just give a shout out to my meme number two today? Me, no problemo. And I just love the narrator. But it was all problemo, right? I'm it's thinking like, Arrested Development up in here. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that actually from that or is it just... Uh, no, it just, a, I just heard, a, you know, Ron Howard saying that in my head. <laughs> I mean, I know that it's completely different than the voice that you had, but that's yeah, what I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, to me, there's this is actually like the story of my life. There's a voiceover in my life, right? There's always a narrator sure. in my head where I'm just like, no, it's all right, you know? And there's a voice in my head. But it was all problemo. Um, little did he know what happened next will shock you. Um, <laughs> anyway, can yeah. I just say something about um, <laughs> this? Is super anything stupid, else? But anything else? Any, <laughs> you might not be wanting it, but <laughs> LDI. I don't know why, but oh, that rhymed. Um, <laughs> You're a poet, and I'm you didn't even El realize. El Diablo, <laughs> El Diablo, and his sister <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> and. That's how I'm going to remember this. Just wanted to make sure everybody knew so maybe they could use it. Everybody, yeah. Uh, and the funny thing is, of course, this is all always open book because there's always that appendix is always given to you. So you don't even have to true. memorize it. But 
it's good to pass but it I through. Thought it was amazing. Yeah, it's good to pass it through your head so it's there, you know what I mean, at least once. Then when you come back to it, you could look it up to be sure, but the idea is there. Okay, so we do the same thing. We form the address exactly the same way. So what happens differently? Are you ready for this? Whew, this is so good. LDI, there's the opcode. Why? Social contract. We just decided. It's, it's a load instruction, so I need to have a destination address. I'm loading it out of storage into my register. I'm saying it's register three, as you can see right there, which is up there. Okay, there's our instruction. You can see it's exactly the same as down below. At no time will my hands leave my arms. So I take this thing. So I do what I just did. There's the incremented program counter. I'm there. Oh, this one's animated because it's a little more complex. That's the program counter already incremented. That is this nine bits sign extended. It's a negative number again. I drop it in the adder and that's the value I get. Okay. I take that value. I put it now. I'm going to, and I'm going to double click on this space. Here's the high level view. The address that, that we just, we just formed an address called hex 49E8, right? We just mathematically did a little math, incremented program counter plus this offset. We got that value. It's a location in memory, right? What's in that location? Is that our storage unit? No, it's a PO box somewhere. So you go like the, here's my storage unit. By the way, it's indirect. You just tell me before I leave, it's indirect. If it's direct, load, you know, lo load. It's like, go to the storage unit. I go there, I open the unit in there, boxes, load it, bring it back, put in the thing. Load in direct goes, here, go to this address. It's an indirect load. I go there and when I open the thing, there is nothing in there but a piece of paper with the, with the address or number of a different storage unit. I go to that storage unit. That's the indirection. I go to that storage unit. And that's where I go get it from. See it? You see it? Now, why would you do this? Some of you have only had 1400, you know, and, and you don't really get all the way into certain ideas like pointers, which you get into with like C very heavily and C++. Not at all with Java, not at all with Python, okay? Um, why would you want it? Why would this be helpful? I will tell you why it's gonna be helpful. There are situations where what I really, really want, C Sharp, uh, I'm not even sure, Texas, I've never programmed in C Sharp, like written, Fresh code in C sharp, and I just don't even remember. I imagine it has pointers, but I don't. I don't know. I really don't. Well, Java has pointers, but Java protects you from the pointers, so you don't have to deal with it. C is like a sharp razor that you're eating your breakfast cereal with instead of a spoon. Yeah, that's pretty graphic. Let me back off of that analogy. Um, no, but imagine that I had a table of all the references to some other thing. What if I had a data structure like a linked list, right? Or some other structure that uses pointers. Um, if I've got this, this thing that says, if they say location zero, I don't care where it really is in memory. I've got a little table, you know? If they say location five, like a, like a you know, an index into an array, but the array is an array of pointers to structures. Which one did you want? I need to be able to go to that array, pull out the pointer, look at that and say, treat that like a pointer and now go out to where it said. That's, it's a little more um, of an advanced programming concept compared to you know what you're gonna get in 1400. But it's also like an introduction into pointers at a really core level. Then later on, when they're like pointers, you're like, Pfft. yeah, I know what that is. Okay, here's we here we go. I'm gonna double click on this bad boy now. Here we go. Four ninety eight. It goes into the MAR. Now this is the part that 
Steve Carell is uh, is going to hate me a little more here in a little bit. Um, not going to like this one either. Apologize in advance. Sorry, not sorry. You have to know this. I take that value. I put it in the MAR. Well, where's that? Over here. That's, that's this guy right here. So I'm like, okay, take that. That's the value. I put that into the MDR. But... It's an indirect operation. So the control unit goes, oh, we're not done here. We are not done here. It's like, I'm not going to give that back to you. No, no. I'm going to put that back into the MAR, which is going to point to this location, which is going to give me that data, which happens to be just negative one, if I view it as a, as a two's complement notation integer. But I don't know what it is. And I'm going to put that in the MDR. That is what I'm going to put into, come on, where are we? That is what I'm going to put into register three. Whew. Anybody else wiped out? Yes. Okay. I feel it. Okay. So when we come back next week. Oh, yeah, weekend time. Catch up, please. I beg you, catch up if you're behind. You have to. Now is the time. You have to. I beg you. I grip my own lapels and beg you to get caught up now. Now, now, now. Okay, now here's the deal. We're on slide 65. Um, in this Majike slide set, there are... Mm, there are many more. There's like more than 100 slides. I'm just looking to see. No, but a bunch of those are animations. So we're going to be okay. But but we've got to get through. we got to get through the other addressing modes. And honestly, I think indirect is probably the trickiest one. Honestly. I, I think indirect is probably the trickiest one. So I think the rest will be more reasonable. And then we're going to go to... The third, we did operate instructions, data movement instructions, and then we're going to do, oh, yeah, 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 control instructions. That's where we learn how to do branching. Keep playing bingo. Keep looking at the homework for little program things that involve these instructions. Okay. And I am out. That's that's unsatisfying, but I have to keep working at it. I love it. Was that pretty good? Was that okay? I don't know. It just it seemed was so awkward. It was amazing. It was crazy awkward. But if I do like this, it doesn't have the effect. I can't do it because the fingers don't move. Drop the hand. You should drop the hand. No, no just drop. drop yeah, just go. Set it just like you know. I don't know. Boom. Boom. Just tan drop. Hey. Here, Quick let me give you a hand. Okay. You have some other hands besides mine? Oh, very nice. Okay, everybody. I'm out. I'm out. We're over time. Hey, Dr. K, I have a quick question. Yeah, hit me. Uh, what was the name of that? You mentioned this guy who wrote a paper a few weeks ago. Um, oh. The paper was written a few weeks ago. You mentioned a few weeks ago. About that guy who wrote about uh, not knowing what's in the memory. Something like that. You're, you're like gushing about him being Did I... super cool paper it, it's an old paper was it it wasn't the von neumann paper yeah it was, von was neumann. It? i think it's in yeah. the thread i think if you just go we can pin it but i think if you look up in the thread it's there ah but that you. was that was the one where von class oh okay that was the one where von neumann didn't really like invent the whole thing because he was working with eckert and or Mockley, you know, on the creation of their thing. So he knew stuff, then he writes this paper, and that paper, you know, kind of gets him credit and a little resentment, actually, from the other guys. But if that's the one, that's up there if you just scroll up. Awesome. All Thank right, you. yeah, man. Okay, see everybody. <laughs>